Oh boy, I'm tired of Synthwave. That beautiful future we aimed for no longer exists. We only have hopelessness now. All that glimmering and shiny soundscape with its retro-futuristic aesthetic doesn't inspire me anymore. This style became outdated squared. We shall move on with it to different approaches for its own sake. But don't get me wrong, there are artists out there that kept reinventing themselves and putting Synthwave to a new level and its cousin, Vaporwave, is alive and well despite what people say. So what? I'm going to show. you. How Synthwave can be good again, how you can throw away most of RetroWave's features and gimmicks and surf your own wave. By combining the most relevant internet styles, I shall achieve a Synthwave greatness never seen before. No more delays, let's go. You need a drum break from the Powerpuff Girls? Take the drum break, speed it up and put it on a washing machine. Boom, break core. Break core is the meth head son of Jungle and DnB, and the break core in today's niche but very engaged so you won't have any problems merging in with your J core synthwave influenced baka beats. Okay, our method right now is take that synth farf we've been listening throughout the video and make it break core with some retro flavor. This is some forgotten stuff I found on my PC. It's really synth wavy, and if you say it sounds like Stranger Things, I'm going to kill myself. This is perfect to be transformed into break core. If you noticed, there are no drums. They are the key element to what defines the style. Knowing this, we're putting the project on at least 107 BPM or equivalent and find some drum breaks on the internet. The rest is just tweaks and adjustments for the track to sound more chaotic or atmospheric. It's really up to you. Let's make more chaotic. Almost done. Now we need some staccato keys and some good voice samples, either from anime, hentai, or obscure foreign movies. And we got our first Synthwave hybrid. to the next one. Have you ever heard of 100 Gex, Sophie, Charlie, Dorian? If not, you should. They are our new pop overlords, so bow. Their fans are also everywhere from Twitter to TikTok. How could you not notice? Anyway, now it's a good chance to explore this growing style. Hyperpop is already a blend of a lot of genres mainly future bass, trap, nightcore and this kind of music. This style is already filled with nostalgia for the time you were in junior high, with death note posters on your room and vibing to caramel dancing. So by adding this hysteric icing upon our retro cake, we should get some cool sounds. So let's go. We're taking that same synth pattern from the breakcore mix, but now we should change its key to C sharp major. Hyperpop revolves around happy sounding music with dark or cynical themes. Take your typical arpeggio plugs as your typical bass pattern, increment it with some right keys or brass to maintain that 80s throwback taste. And this is basically the same instrumental from the breakcore one, but happier. Now to the tricky part, the drums. Hyperpop requires loud and distorted kicks. Get some 808 drum pack and make it as loud as possible. In my case, I modified some presets from the kick to VSTI. And by messing with the kicks, you should achieve something like this. Good. Get a snare from the 808 pack and add a whole lot of compression and distortion. The drum pattern must be something out of an 80s pop song, but with a chaotic twist. Also, add some trap hi-hats and you should have a good Frankenstein-ish consistency. Now for the real fun part, the vocals. 
you should materialize yourself into a chipmunk and imagine yourself as a singer of a trio of chipmunks. Sing, and then add some autotune, distortion and a light reverb. Baby, they'll look at you now, I know you're original. You're gonna swear it to me, you're gonna keep it legit. That's it, let's see the results. Wow, it's actually good, I guess. Okay, let's go to the next one. Lo-fi hip-hop beats, chill hop, jazz hop, everybody knows it by now. J Dilla and Ujab's legacy sparkled into a whole internet movement that is still alive. This style has many name variations and combinations, but their core is basically the same. If you like soft jazzy beats to chill and retro rave synthesizers to vibe, you are now on the right track. Chill Hop mainly relies on sampling for most of its elements, so this should be simple. If you watch the video till now, you know what I'm going to do. Chill Wave and Lo-Fi Synth Wave are well-established combinations actually, but it doesn't matter. Now I'm going to show my own take on this blend, let's go. As usual, we are going to transform the generic synth wave progression into a Lo-Fi Synth Wave. Your usual elements are here, but more dreamy. I removed the bright keys and the bass pattern is a little different. The arpeggio plug is now an arpeggio synth lead because we need everything to be more subtle and smooth. We should also slow down the project to 80 BPM, everything for the chill. And as I said, lo-fi in general relies on sampling, so I'm going to sample two main elements for this song, the main melody and the drums. This sample here is the beginning of a song called Corcovado by Tom Jobim and Elise Regina, two icons from Brazil. The works of Tom Jobim are mainly bossa nova, but this will do the trick. And this here is the beginning of a song called How About You by the American saxophonist Serge Kelloff. By chopping and basically butchering the samples, you may find a progression that best suits your intention. And this is what I made. really feels like it came straight out of your grandma's wooden radio. This is the lo-fi beat, just one half of the nostalgia sandwich. Now we just need to get the other half, the synthwave half, and we got ourselves the pinnacle of chilling and nostalgic vibes. But before that, add some pianos and other percussive elements and we're good to go. Let's see the results. It wasn't really anything groundbreaking, but I thought it was cool. On to the next one. One day I had a dream that the Atlanta rapper Future released a synthwave album called Back to the Future. 
In that dream, the album was the perfect blend of trap and synth wave, something the world had never seen before. Since I'm the only one who saw the other side, I'm going to show you how trap and rap can change synth wave forever. Trap has been around for more than a decade now and spawned some new classics along spreading its influence to all of pop music. If we take the usual trap flow, its beat and combine with the synth wave touch, we'll be achieving levels of trip no one would ever be able to comprehend. So let's do that. Oh wow, we are using this generic pattern again. We should put this song on 80 BPM, which is equivalent to 160 BPM, but whatever. We also have everything we need for our symphony song, minus the drums, which we are going to borrow from Trap. Also, I basically crippled our bass pattern because the Trap kick is going to act like a sub bass. Okay, a Trap kick is similar to the loud and distorted one from Hyperpop, but we are only aiming for the low frequencies here. Since I'm using the kick to VSTi, the process is kinda simple, but it's also easy to make some on FL Studios, but that software is for plebs. Get yourself the 808 kicks and adjust them to act like the bass of the song, then proceed to the hi-hats and the snare, which are really simple patterns. I like to think that trap is a branch of minimalistic and avant-garde music, because its basic elements are just that, really basic, but I can't say anything because I love it. Our instrumental is done, we just need to get some flows. I called Travis Scott and Lil Uzi earlier but our schedules didn't match, so I'll be doing the vocals here. Please forgive me God. And before that, we just need to write some lyrics. Let's go. Got some bitch in the light, got some bitch in the light, that paper polites, that paper polites, I received the call. Okay, everything is ready. The name of this song will be Call of the Night. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Got some bitch in the light, got some bitch in the light, that paper polites, that paper polites, I received the call. I received a call Motherfuckers want to kill me too Afraid of my balls Fuck it all, yeah Fuck it all, fuck it all We are heroes, never die We are heroes We are heroes, never die We are heroes I'll be gone by sunrise I'll be gone by the night oh, I'll be gone when it's young too I'll be gone when you pray for me I got vision, you see I got vision, I got vision I don't need to be here Fuck it all, yeah You don't know how much I wanted Future to sing on this song. Well, we're now on the last one. Let's go. Do you miss that time when you were playing Super Nintendo in the living room while your mother was listening to Tears for Fears while cooking a delicious meal? If your answer is yes, you are lying because you probably weren't alive in the 90s. Chip tune and synth wave, or better, chip wave, is a combination that is already well formed. The thing is, chip tone has a lot of approaches and can be really complex. You can be a purist and have some expensive gear only a nerd has while speaking codes and working with this thing here, or you can just put some synths similar to 8 bit or 16 bits and call it a day. We're taking the easy way. I've been using a notorious fee plugin called Magic 8 bit plugin. I'm pretty sure the chiptune community hate this thing, but I guess that's the real magic. So, to make this blend, I'm not going to follow any rules. I'll be playing with 8 and 16 bits while also using Beat Crush for sampling. The actual way you make chiptune is through limitations and how you overcome technical limitations to achieve a specific sound. You only receive basic sound waves and you should play with it. Noise also plays an important role for the percussion and drums, but really forget about limitations. We are here basically just making a synthwave song, but with chip tune characteristics and only a few normal synthesizers. Chip tune and synthwave both share similarities in their conception. That's why they blend so well. Having that in mind, give yourself some liberty while blending these styles. Just remember their shared traits and make a song. I'm just going to keep our bass pattern and the rest will be replaced by the Magic 8-bit plugin. I'll put some chorus in our former bright key so we can really feel the layers and the drums will be a mix of noise and samples. Low frequency noise is the kick, high frequency noise is the hi-hat and in between we have the snare. Yeah, it's just really that. Now I'm going to show my take on Chip Wave.
that's it for today. I know this isn't anything near a tutorial but I hope you liked the video. I wanted to try something different for the channel while talking about the main thing that brought you guys here. My channel currently has 176,000 subs but less than 5% of it watch my current videos. If you like this format, I'm thinking about doing something like this once every month. Also, I want to release one of the versions of the generic synth pattern. Tell me in the comments which version you like the most and I'm going to release it. That's it, see you later.